this is one of those topics that I feel like people might be tired of hearing about because I do talk a lot about trade shows on this podcast. But the reason I continue to kind of, you know, touch on that subject is because it truly is the best way to meet or to land the most wholesale accounts in the shortest period of time and not just ASD, but trade shows in general. So let's start with talking about just your strategy. How are you going about approaching the show uh, coming up here this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense to kind of segment it off into kind of three sections, three sectors, if you will, right? Pre-show, right? Getting ready for the show, prepping for the show. Because keep in mind, a lot of these events have the data posted somewhere, whether it be their website, a guide, whatever the case may be, where you can access the company information, who's going to be there, even where they're going to be prior to the show, which is very, very helpful in terms of like doing a lot of due diligence, doing a lot of preparation, having them having some of those conversations beforehand, right? So all the pre-work leading up to the show to prepare yourself to be at the show and really make the most of that time spent. And then obviously at the end, right, post-show, what to do, how to follow up, how to keep engaged with these sales reps so they don't just kind of forget about you, right? Because keep in mind, right, right, a lot of these sales reps are going to have a lot of these conversations, hundreds, tens of conversations each and every day. And so we want to make sure that after we interact with these people, we stay top of mind. So it's not just something that's a, a blast from the past, right? We want to keep engaged, keep front of mind. And so when maybe their next deal comes up, maybe they have a big markdown on a product or something like that, we're some of the first people that they reached out to. Yeah. So kind of without being with that being said, let's kind of work through each iteration, starting with leading up to a show. Obviously, it's good timing now or for your, your case is going to be released after after the show, but um, kind of that pre-work leading up to the A show, ASD, Expo West, there's a ton of them. What goes into that? Yeah, great question. So, and I like, I like the idea of like segmenting it between the like pre-show, during the show and after the show. And I think I've got some really good tips for each of those sections. So the pre, when it comes to pre-show, now this is the advice that I've been giving everybody else because this is what's worked really well for me when I go to trade shows. So before I go to the show, I'm going to be doing some research on what's going to be happening at the show, right? Either I'm going to be doing the research or my team's going to be doing the research. So to use ASD as an example, because that's the show coming up this weekend, ASD is a a very broad show. There's a lot of different suppliers representing a lot of different categories. We know from experience, there's an entire hall dedicated to beauty, cosmetics. Uh, There's an entire hall dedicated to alternative products, things like you know, smoke shop products, uh, you know, just kind of convenience store suppliers, these random products that are kind of more general. And then you've got an entire hall dedicated to just general merchandise, wholesalers of all kinds of different products, liquidators, close out suppliers, toys, tools, yeah, ton of different stuff. So when it comes to whatever show you're thinking about attending, I like to kind of narrow my focus and decide, okay, what are the categories or category Mm -hmm. that I'm going to target at this show? Now, once I have that category in mind, I like to further narrow down what are the, say, 10 to 15 brands that I'm going to this show to source? Because I think a huge mistake a lot of sellers make is they, they go to a trade show, they get all excited about it, and they, but they don't have a plan, right? They, they kind of just end up wandering around, hoping opportunities fall into their lap when they should be taking a very targeted approach, thinking like, I'm going to this show to source XYZ brands and XYZ products. So I'm choosing my category, I'm choosing the exact brands from that category that I want to source, and then I'm making a list of, let's say, three to five products per brand that I want to buy while I'm there. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of value to that, right? Because the more leverage you head into that conversation with, the better your positioning then becomes, the more authentic you are, the more le- the more just established you appear, right? So if you if you could approach a brand with say, hey, did our team did some due diligence into your product line? You know, we have a lot of interest based on our kind of company standards and products X, Y, Z. Ideally, 500 of this, 700 of this, whatever, 1,000 of this, at sort of this range of target pricing. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And are you close in, in terms of your, the, your pricing? That's right. a lot different than someone pr- approaching the same sales rep and be like, hey, I want to buy your products. Right. It, yep. It's black and Completely white difference. It's very, very differentiated in terms of like how you come across these sales reps, right? First impressions matter. And on top of that, right. And especially nowadays, the past couple of days, 
with the information that we have of the companies and sales reps that are going to be there, we could even be reaching out to, to them saying something to the effect of, hey, I see you're going to ASC. We'll be there too. We just were reaching out to see if we can get a pricing catalog ahead of time so we can do some due diligence into your data and be ready at the show to place an order in person, in hand, um, and make that happen at the show, right? It gives them some motivation to provide that information in a timely fashion because they know in the back of their head if they have a quarter to make at the show, if they have to sell a certain amount, that maybe you're potentially something that they can depend on for a sale at that point in time. Yeah, and I love your your point about framing it and the way of like, hey, we're gonna place an order. Motivation, like mo basically, yeah. Fra yeah, yeah, framing the conversation in the sense of showing how serious you are by telling them that by giving you this information, by giving you this data, your goal is to place an order at the show. So that's just a tip in general, regardless of whether you're attending trade shows, but when you're dealing with distributors or wholesalers or even the manufacturer directly, stating things in through the lens of like the order that I'm going to place, right? Because at the end of the day, money talks and they want to know that you're serious. Now, another good point that you made is any trade show out there is going to list their exhibitors on their website. And the best, smartest sellers who are going to be the most proactive and make the most things happen at the show are being super proactive and reaching out to some of these suppliers before the show, right? Doing exactly what you said, saying something along the lines of, hey, my name's Corey, I'm in a retail business. I, I see you're going to be at ASD or, you know, XYZ trade show. I'm going to be there as well. Would love to go ahead and get the paperwork out of the way so that as soon as I come up to your booth at the show, I can place an order, right? And now if that means they send you over some pricing or just even their customer application to get you in their system, it makes it way more frictionless to go ahead and get an order in the system once you show up on show day. And if you've done that research that we talked about of knowing the brands and the products and the categories that you want to buy, even down to the price that you're willing to pay, it makes succeeding at trade shows virtually guaranteed, right? Like if you know what you want, you just have to find a vendor that can meet your price. Like, and that's not very hard to do at these shows really because all these guys are competing for your business. Yeah, and it just really establishes a little bit of urgency, right? Most times when we reach out to sales reps, there's an open-ended timeline. Yeah, I want an account, but it's not really that important. I don't really care, right? I haven't really established when I want your response, but right. maybe if you get to it, you can reply. But when the show is this weekend, it's like, hey, I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm looking to spend money on this date. Can we make this happen beforehand so we can all you know, profit at that particular time? And I think there's a lot of value in that. Now, as we start to kind of approach that individual show, some of the things right, that someone should keep in mind when they're packing, planning, and getting ready to travel for some of these shows, business cards, right? Mm -hmm. I would say like a branded polo. I think it's easy enough to make branded t-shirt, something like that. Yeah, you've got, you've that got just a shows them like rock and ears. Yeah. I mean, I just think it makes sense, right? You, you have spent $30, $40 for whatever it is. I think it just, again, makes you stand out a little bit more. Does it make a difference? No. Does it matter? Not necessarily, but I think it doesn't hurt. I mean, it definitely helps. Um, business cards, a brand. What, what else am I missing? Obviously a laptop or something to do data research, things like that. I would say something to take notes on because something that I would suggest is after every conversation, kind of just step off to the side and just take some notes, right? MOQs, turnaround times, where they ship from, um, any sort of volume discounts that they could potentially offer, the sales rep's name, number, email that you're going to be contacting with and working with on an ongoing basis. Just really the high level points that you are learned from that conversation, just so you don't have to rehash it, right? Just so you can keep it top of mind things that are important. So when you're sitting, you're back in your hotel room that night, you can use that information to kind of work through the order. And that's such a good point. And that's actually something I've, I've written down in my notes to touch on during the, like during the show section of, the, of this conversation. So just remind me to come back to that as far as like making notes of supplier conversations. I've got some really good tips on that. But another, in my opinion, critical tool to have with you, make sure that you have in place before the show is the Seller Ant mobile app, right? There's not any other mobile app out there that I'm aware of that is as robust as Seller Ant because, I mean, I told you this last time I went to ASD in August, my phone was dying by like middle of the day because I literally am on the Seller Ant mobile app the entire time. If I'm talking to a vendor yeah. and they say, hey, Corey, we've got a great deal on XYZ product. I say, okay, great. Well, you know, what's the UPC or let me, let me give it a quick scan. 
I, I'm looking at it in seller amp, I'm crunching the numbers, and then I can make a decision within 10 seconds on to, as to whether or not I'm going to buy, and I can tell them exactly how many I want to buy. So that tool just makes it super easy, you know, whether you're doing retail arbitrage or even obviously in yeah. a trade show context like this, to, to make data-driven decisions. So that's another one as well. Now, um, another point that I really want to drive home, and this is, again, this is some research that you can do before the show, is asking these vendors, assuming you're proactively reaching out to them in advance, what their show deals are going to look like, mm -hmm. right? Because most vendors, in fact, pretty much all the vendors at any trade show, they're going to be offering some sort of trade show deals or trade show specials. And these are going to be deals that you can only get at the show. Now, some vendors will extend them after the show. And a lot of times it's while supplies last. So some of these vendors, they have deals that if you're not at their booth, the second the doors open on day one, placing an order, their best stuff is gone within 20 minutes. In fact, I remember walking in the door on Saturday morning, which is the pre-show or the pre, like the, the pre-day and ASD last August, went up to a vendor's booth and, you know, we were talking about a product and he's like, oh man, you know, you just missed it. We had this fantastic deal. It would have been great for you. Uh, and another, another guy just bought out our whole stock. And I'm like, how you got, it's been open for 20 minutes. He's like, well, yeah, he walked in the second the doors open and came right over to our booth. So again, having that sense of urgency, asking the right questions, such as what are these show, what show deals do you have? What specials do you have? And then when you find a good opportunity bounce like jump on it, right? Because it will right. sell out quickly if it's a good deal. Yeah. So starting to transition to at actually at the show. Now, if you're listening to this and you've never been to an ASD, you can expect to probably be a little bit intimidated first time you walk in the door, right? The one of the halls, you're going to be in one of three halls. Each hall is probably the size of like two or three football fields, hundreds and hundreds of booths spanning in either direction. Lots of guys in suits behind these booths, right? But the thing that I want you to remember, right, as you're listening to this, maybe you're on the plane heading to the show, whatever the case may be, is these people are paying thousands of dollars to talk to you, right? Thousands of dollars to be there and think about it conceptually. They're on the other end of the supply chain. They're there to sell products. You're there to buy, right? So it's it's really a match made in heaven in terms of why they're there, why you're there. You each want what the other people have. And so with that sort of like macro mindset, it's really nothing more complex than, hey, I'm trying to buy your products. What do you have? What pricing? And let's 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 make it happen, right? So at the show, kind of walk me through top level, what are we thinking? Yeah, so, and that's a great question. So at the show, and again, this is something that is kind of gonna be a mindset shift for a lot of Amazon sellers, because we talk about how when you're contacting suppliers, right, you wanna position yourself as more than an Amazon seller. And at the end of the day, we're kind of a commodity when we're just cold calling these suppliers mm -hmm. or cold emailing these suppliers. At, a, at trade shows, it's a little bit different. In fact, it's pretty much the opposite because at these shows, these vendors are the commodity. We are the buyer, right? We have the money, we have the leverage. So what I love about these shows, especially when we know what we want and we've done our research, I can walk up to a buyer, uh, to a vendor and say, hey, I'm looking for XYZ brand, XYZ product. And they might say, oh yeah, well, we've got it at $12. And I could say, well, you know, that's great, but Joe in the booth next to you has it at $11. So, you know, if you can match his price, I'd, I'd love to do business with you. But if not, then I'm just going to walk over to Joe, right? So the moral of the story is you need to have these vendors competing for your business. And you don't need to be timid of the fact that you're selling on Amazon because guys, at most of these shows, there are going to be a ton of other Amazon sellers, especially at ASD. So it's not uh, like no vendor is going to be like shocked that you're selling on Amazon. In fact, they probably expect it but it's in how you tell them that you're selling on Amazon that makes all the difference. If they ask you, well, okay, where do you sell or what do you guys do? And you say, well, oh, you know, we, we sell online and you, know, you kind of like beat around the bush and, and are not confident about where you sell, they're gonna sniff that out and they're, they're gonna be like, okay, this guy's an amateur, right? He, he's wasting my time. But if you say, well, yeah, we're, we're an e-commerce retailer. We've been in business uh, for the last almost seven years now. We've, we're a pretty large seller on Amazon. That's probably our primary sales channel and we're here to source inventory for that channel, then they're like, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense, right? That this guy and you know a lot of other people just yeah. like him are walking around. So it's just, again, it's a, a reframe that if you can confidently talk about what you're doing, the Amazon question is a non-issue. Yeah, uh, you raise a good point about like starting to leverage different pricing. And I, I think 
the 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 prime mover of that is is really going back to how we kind of prep for the show is just to know what you want knowing the yep. sorts of brands that you're after the sorts of niches that you want to dig deeper into ideally with some already previous success right because that gives you leverage and the previous knowledge to say oh so we've been buying actually a couple thousand of these at this per- specific price point you can be competitive we can maybe even buy more from you particularly right something like that again just shows you're more established shows that you're approaching them with the experience with the probably the the, the pockets that is is desirable of someone from their perspective right the more you can use the more leverage the more data you have the better and and i'll give you a specific example of that so again this this is going to air on your channel pre pre asd so hopefully guys can get some tips for uh from this it's going to air on my podcast the last day of asd so it's a little too late but you know going in the next time this is a tip for folks so i'm approaching this show and i'm only going to asd to buy gillette right that's the only brand i'm there to source i'm not buying perfume i'm not buying you know oral b i'm only buying gillette and i'm walking in the door with a piece of paper in my hand that I printed out just a spreadsheet that we printed out of every single Gillette product that I've bought in the past and every Gillette product that I want to buy along with a 30 day supply. So, you know, a a quantity for what would last us 30 days and our desired price point. So that way, when I walk up to a vendor and they see this paper in my hand, they're probably going to ask me, well, Hey, you know, what's What do you got there in your hand? And I might say, Oh, well, actually, this is my this is my buy list. This is essentially my shopping list. And and here I've got uh, you know I can give you a specific example. Like I've got a, a Skin Guard eight count razor on this list. And you know we buy thousands per month. In fact, we can't get our hands on enough. Uh, we we currently pay about sixteen dollars per unit for this product. But if you can beat sixteen dollars, I will buy literally every single one that you have. And it's you, you see how I phrase that. It makes it so easy for them to say yes because if they have that product. And sixteen dollars is above their cost, or is uh, you know, yeah, above their cost. Then it's a no-brainer for them to say, well, yeah, actually, we got you know three thousand of those. Let's let's write up a PO right now. So again, because you it just comes th- back to knowing about you, what knowing what you want. And you also have to like empathize with their perspective, right? These are salespeople. They're they're very dollar-driven, percent-driven, right? So they're doing the math. Whenever you're talking, all they're doing is taking ten percent, five percent, fifteen percent of any number that you're any perspective order that you're talking about. Right. right. So if you're coming here talking about sixteen dollars and they know they have whatever it is, five thousand, three thousand units, what's well, like, oh shoot, that's you know, seventy thousand dollar PO, I make five percent, seventy dollars, ten percent, seven thousand dollars payday right now. Right. It right. just gives them more conceptual motivation to get that discount authenticated with their bit with their supervisor, with their manager, whatever the case may be, because it's very, very close ended, right? you mm-hmm. gave them you're giving them the authority, but realistically you're leading them down the path that you want. Right. And so right. Let's kind of transition to actually handling these conversations, right? I think it's important to kind of go into every conversation with a strategy, with a framework in mind of what you want to accomplish, right? And we already kind of talked about the kind of high level things that you want to learn, right? Being where they ship from, do they have different distribution companies, the turnaround time, any MOQs, any potential volume discounts, all of these sorts of things. If they're a distribution company, do they have access to maybe different brands, maybe a Gillette that they don't have listed, things like that right? If they're, if they have continuous stock or not, right? That's a big one for me personally, with a lot of these distribution companies, whether it's, you know, close out or distribution oriented. Um, I think that's kind of like the, the major bullet points that again, you should be taking notes on after every conversation. Um, but just really kind of to lead the conversation, to make sure you learn each and every piece of that pie. Did I miss anything there? No, so I think all of those questions are, I think that's a really good, almost like a checklist, right? So for, mm-hmm. for those of you that are attending a show anytime soon, rewind that last couple of minutes and, and make a list of everything that Garrett said, right? And you could have that list on a piece of paper or on your phone with you. And don't be afraid to be looking at this list while you're talking to these people, right? It's totally right. normal. And it's not to say you're going to ask every single vendor, every single one of those questions. But if you hit it off with a vendor, if you, you see potential to work with them, then it doesn't hurt to whip out that list and say, well, hey, you know, sounds like you guys, sounds like we might have some good opportunities here. While I have you, do you mind if I ask you X, Y, Z, right? Like you said, what's your MOQ? Uh, Do you offer a free, is there a threshold for free shipping? Are these only opportunity buys or do you have consistent stock? Uh, where, Where are you shipping from? Do you ship to all 50 states, right? It's just 
kind of going down the list and making sure that they check all the boxes. And I couldn't agree more with what you said. Now, this is a tip that I want to give people that I think is very important. And I think it's going to help, uh, especially guys that are brand new to trade shows, really focus their efforts while they're there. So first of all, if, you're, if you've never been to a trade show before, regardless of which one you go to, it's going to be overwhelming and it's going to be intimidating. I remember the first one that I went to, it was Outdoor Retailer in Denver in, I think, August of 2021. Now, I had never been to a trade show before. And in fact, I knew like three other Amazon sellers and like I only knew three other Amazon sellers at the time. So not only did I have a no network of sellers, I had no network of suppliers either, really, that I that I knew in person. So I went to this show. I was very intimidated and I didn't have a good approach. I was kind of just haphazardly going from booth to booth. But what I've learned since then is what I should have done is set a goal for the number of conversations that I wanted to have each day, right? Not just the number of like booths that I wanted to walk up to, but something along the lines of, okay, I want to speak to 25 new vendors each day that each day that I'm there. And if I'm going to be at the show for three days, that's going to be, you know, 75 vendors. And the, the idea behind that is if I'm talking to 25 new vendors per day, then with each conversation, I'm going to get a little more confident. My pitch is going to improve just, you know, five to 10% more each time. And by that 25th conversation, <clears throat> I'm, I'm rattling it off like I'm doing it in my sleep, right? And then come day two, it gets way easier. And again, when you think about it from just like a numbers perspective, if you speak to 25 vendors, you're probably going to find two to five that are that have some sort of legitimate opportunities. And so again, if you do that every day for three days, that's you know six to 15 potential profitable vendors that at that point, you've just got to follow up with, you've got to sit down and do the actual analysis to, to get some opportunities on the board. And that will happen if you set that goal every day. Yeah. Would you agree? Oh, big time, big time, big time, big time. That's kind of like the uh, the perspective. I think you talked about it in one of your one of your pieces of content the past couple of days is like calling until you get a specific amount of no's or something like that. Yeah, your your no. Actually, that's a Chris Grant, Chris Grant concept that we're totally stealing from him. But he his his like uh, his line was, "I want you guys to set a quota for the number of no's yeah, yeah, that you yeah. get." Right. And now at trade shows, you're not necessarily going to get like a lot of no's. You're not just going to get like shot down. But it's the same concept, right? set a set a measurable goal for like knowing that if you hit that goal then either you you're going to find opportunities or you're going to improve drastically so for me again my goal at trade shows is usually to have about 25 to 30 quality conversations with new suppliers per day right and now some of these conversations are going to last for two to three minutes because you can tell quickly they're not a fit and some of these conversations are going to last for 20 or 30 minutes because you hit it off with a vendor and you really want to do business with them. So the key is just putting in the reps and getting out there and just talking to people all day long. And I know that's terrifying for some people, yeah. but you know, they're, they're exhausting really for way. others, but it is. Yeah. Really and, but like, listen, that's why you, you know, you're paying probably a thousand or $2,000 mm -hmm. to fly across the country and get a hotel for a few days and, and go out there to, to grow your business. Like that's what it takes. Right. I, I hate seeing, Amazon sellers like clustered up in the hallway outside the show, kind of talking to each other instead of being out on the floor, talking yep. to each other, at least kind of putting themselves in the vicinity of some of these suppliers. Right. Yeah. I think the last, the last point we have to hit on before we kind of transition to post show kind of post mortem is, is not always is the person you talk to at the booth going to be the person that you're going to be interacting with. Right. Sometimes right. they're sending sales managers, department heads, owners, something like that. And so the last piece of the pie that you want to leave with during these conversations is the actual email and phone uh, name of the sales rep in your region, right? So a lot of yep. these people have it it's divided by region or something like that. So it's going to be a waste of a time, waste of a conversation if you don't leave with that that piece of work, right? Because when we once we start to get into like the, the post-mortem of the event, we need a name and a phone number and an email of the person that is going to be selling our goods to us of the person that we're going to be directly interacting with to make this happen, right? Because if they weren't at the show, they don't know who you were, right? They don't know any of this, but you want to make sure that progress is still being made. And so it's important to have an actual name and an exact actual person of the individual that's going to be kind of interacting with you and then kind of dealing with you and, and putting up your POs. That's, that's such a good tip. And so I've got 
three more things I want to touch on very quickly before we go into to post show. So kind of to piggyback on what you said there, the way that you should ask that question when you're talking to a vendor, again, you're feeling them out, you feel like there might be an opportunity there. You want to ask, well, who's who's going to be my sales rep moving forward for, you know, when we when we get back home and when we continue mm -hmm. to do business long term, right? Because you're almost like assuming that you're going to work together. You're assuming that they're going to have no issue selling right. to you, right? And when you frame it that way, they might just say like, oh, yeah, that's that's Tom. He covers North Carolina. Uh, I'll give you his information or better yet, I'll send an email to Tom and I'll CC you on it, introducing you guys so that that way he knows who you are. So, again, asking that question confidently to lead them to say like, oh, well, yeah, this guy's going to work with us. The, the second thing I want to touch on there is that, and this is random, but this is true, and I'm sure you've noticed this as well. It's, I swear, I don't know what it is, but it's like the rinky dink boots yeah. that, look, <laughs> that look like trash, that like, it looks like the guy just kind of threw up and just kind of hope for the best. I swear, it's those boots that for whatever reason have a lot of times really good opportunities. And I'll give you an example. So the, the second trade show I ever went to, I walked up to a booth and this guy was sitting there and he, he was, he was literally sitting in the chair, kind of like on his phone, super casual, older guy in his seventies. And his booth was just a bunch of like plastic bags, thumbtacked to the booth that had TV remotes in each bag. So it was like basically a wall of plastic bags with TV remotes in them, probably 50 to 60 different remotes. And I walked by the booth. I'm like, what is this? Like, what is this guy doing? Is this worth my time? Anyways, we get to kind of talk in and come to find out he is a distributor of electronic remotes and electronic accessories and has been for like 40 years. He's got like very strong relationships directly with these manufacturers of like Motorola, Philips, Sharp, you know, all these big TV brands, LG, these big TV brands. And come to find out, he was like, oh man, he's like, because I was telling him I sell on Amazon, telling him all about our business. He's like, man, you just missed it. If you were here 15 minutes earlier, these guys just came through and they bought 6,000 units of these three different remotes that are killer products for Amazon. He's like, you just missed it. I, I just sold out, but you know, got his information and followed up with them. And I, again, it was a rinky dink boot that I would have, everybody else was just walking right by. Owner was the nicest guy in the world. Very easy to build rapport with. So that's the second tip. And if you have anything to add, go ahead. But I got one more and then we can transition to kind of post show. Yeah, keep it going. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna to touch on when it comes to at the show, having these conversations, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, but there's no use in having a really good conversation with a supplier or you know hitting that 25 new supplier conversation goal. That's useless if you don't effectively follow up. And the best way to follow up is to, is to have context on your conversation. Because big, I, big, big. I can't tell you how many times mm -hmm. my first one or two trade shows, I'd have a conversation with a vendor, it would go great. I get back to my hotel room, I've got a stack of like 30 business cards and I'm going through them and I'm like, wait, Tom, what, what did we talk about? What did he sell? Is he out of Virginia? Was he out of New York? And, and it's just like, you have no idea what happened because there's so much going on during the day. So everybody that has an iPhone has the voice memo app pre-installed in their phone. And what I want you guys to do is when you have a conversation with a vendor, as soon as you exit that conversation, step away from the booth, make a 20 second voice memo. And all you're gonna say is, I just talked to Tom, he's with XYZ company, they sell XYZ products. We talked about these brands and any other notes that are relevant from the conversation. And I really like to include personal stuff about Tom, right? Tom has, you know, he's got two kids, they play baseball, he's a diehard Braves fan, right? So that way, when I follow up with Tom next week, I can, I can reference that conversation down to the most vivid details to where he's thinking to himself, wow, Corey remembers that I'm a baseball fan? That's crazy. I talked to 300 people. I don't really remember him, but he remembered me, so he's probably somebody yeah. we're talking to. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then each day, it just comes down to processing those voice memos, entering them into your CRM or your spreadsheet or whatever you're using to track your outreach. And that way, your your chances of getting a response from a personalized follow up are significantly higher. Yeah, that per like just gaining one, leaving with one personal identifier is huge. Yeah. The last ASD, I talked to a sales rep that used to skate the same mountain that I did as a kid, right? And the email, the follow up email, which we'll get into now, is like that's what I leveraged for that email. Like, hey, remember skiing at Berna? Like, yada, yada, yada. Like, instantly he now remembers who I was, and the rest is history, right? So now getting to, we're home, 
back from Vegas, right? We rehydrated, got all the the toxins out of our body, right? Now, what are we doing, right? Obviously, we want to start to digest a lot of this information, the stuff that we maybe haven't acted on, maybe haven't placed in order. We want to be able to still allow these relationships to continue building, keep the momentum building, and, and make sure that they it was productive being there talking to them. Yeah, so my system for like post-show follow-up is so again at the show and as shortly after the show as well that's when you're going to start to get pricing you're going to start to get price lists or access to their pricing on their website so this is really where the hard work comes in right talking to the vendors and getting those relationships set up that's hard work but now you've got to sit down and crunch through a ton of data mm -hmm. to find those diamonds in the rough that are going to be good opportunities so if you don't have a virtual assistant or if you don't have a team doing your sourcing this is where you're going to you're going to lock in for a few hours each day and process these lists and this pricing one by one. Now, my strategy is if let's say we process the pricing from a vendor and it's just not quite where we need to be or they don't really have any opportunities that fit our business model at that time, well I'm not just going to disregard that vendor entirely and just blow them off and just not reply to them. I'm going to reply to them and say, "Hey, we looked through your pricing. We appreciate you sending that over." Unfortunately, there aren't any opportunities that fit our model at this moment in time. However, I am going to check in with you every week or two to see if you have anything else coming down the pipeline, right? And now when you give them that feedback, one, they're going to just think to themselves, okay, well, you know, maybe we, nothing works right now, but something will work here in the near future. And when you actually do check in every week or two, maybe they don't have any opportunities for the first few weeks, but then they're going to get something on their desk and they're going to say, oh, well, you know, Garrett's been checking in with me every week or two. I met him at ASD. I know what he wants because he gave me feedback. This is right up his alley. I'm going to send it right over to him. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of those things where even if you don't find immediate results from that conversation, this is something that can be more fruitful, you know, two, four, six weeks down the line. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the bottom line is you just want to stay top of mind, right? You just want to continue to make it known that you're, that you're proactively looking to buy from them. And that that conversation that you had isn't just a dead end, right? You want to be right. stay on the on their shoulders, stay and continue to be engaged. Um, and I think you're at some point, right? It may not be the following week or the week after, but you'll kind of reap the benefits of that at some point in time if you stay and continue to be engaged with these uh, with these folks. But yeah, I mean, I think you know we dove into a ton ton of good information of things that people can leverage. Maybe not ASD, but the Expo West or whatever that next trade show is. I know you like a lot of like the smaller shows that are more niche, more specific to a particular type of product. Um, and you want to talk about the, I think you're holding a media meetup Saturday in Vegas, right? Yeah. So for anybody that's going to be at ASD this coming weekend, and again, if you're listening to this on my podcast, this time has already passed, but if you're watching this on Garrett's channel, we're going to be hosting a completely free pretty casual, just informal meetup, Saturday night, 7 p.m. Vegas time at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, second floor, just in the atrium area, very similar to the one we did uh, ASD last August. Last time we did it, we had like at least 100 people show up. We're just gonna be hanging out, chatting, probably get dinner after. So anybody that is around, welcome to come through and hang out. Hope to see some of you guys there. Cool, 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 cool. And for uh, people on my channel, where can people find you? Yeah, so probably on YouTube is going to be their best bet, right? Over on just at Corey Ganim on YouTube. And then if you, again, if you're watching this on Garrett's channel, be sure to check out my podcast, the Amazon Wholesale Podcast. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, for those of you listening pre-ASC, hope to see you there sometime at the show, Saturday night, whatever the case may be. Um, but other than that, let us know if you need any help in the meantime, but I keep crushing. Yep, thanks, man.